Minecraft 1.21.2 ups the data pack version to 57 and the resource pack version to 42, bringing us goodies like lots of new item components, new recipe functionality, new data driven registries, emissive textures and more. My name is Sliced Lime and this is a comprehensive guide to the changes. Let's start with item components. The food component has been turned into a pure data container without any behavior change. That is, having a food component alone no longer makes an item consumable, and no longer includes which effects that food has in a non-nutritional sense. The nutrition, saturation and can always eat fields are still there, but everything else has been moved away. The new home for this functionality is in a number of new components, with the consumable component being the main one. When this component is present, the item can be consumed, which means the item can be used on its own over some time with some animation and is then used up. A number of other components also interact with the consumable component, so if the food component is present, it controls when the item can be consumed through the can always eat flag, and the nutrition data are added when the item is consumed. If the potion contents, ominous bottle amplifier or suspicious stew contents components are present, the effects of those components are also added when the item is consumed. The consume component has a consume seconds field controlling the amount of time it takes to consume the item. This has to be non-negative, but it can be zero which is different from the previous food functionality. The animation field controls what animation is played when the player consumes the item. It can be none. <laughs> Eat, drink, lock, bow, crossbow, spear, spyglass, toot horn, or brush. The sound field controls what sound is played while consuming the item with the default value of entity.generic.eat. Has consume particles is a boolean field controlling whether particles are produced from consuming the item, which defaults to true. And finally, the on consume effects field controls other effects that can happen when the consumable is consumed. This is a list of consume effects of which there are currently five valid types. The apply effects consume effect applies status effects to the consumer. It has an effects list which is a list of effect instances to apply and the probability field determining the probability of the effect being applied, with a default value of 1. The remove effects consume effect removes some set of effects. This is a single field effects, which is an effect type ID, list of effect type IDs or hash prefixed effect type tag. Clear all effects clears all status effects from the consumer. The teleport randomly effect teleports the consumer randomly within a certain diameter, specified in the diameter field, which defaults to 16. And finally, the play sound effect plays a sound when the item has been consumed. That isn't the only new component, however. The use remainder component defines what item is left over when an item is used, like a honey bottle leaving an empty bottle. The format of this component is an item stack which will replace the item when used. If the used item is in a stack of more than one, the item is added to the inventory instead, and if the inventory is also full, the item is instead dropped to the ground. Note that this component does not apply when the item is used in creative mode. The use cooldown component being present means the item cannot be used again within some cooldown period after use, specified in the seconds field. There's also an optional field called cooldown group, which can be used to mark a set of items to be on cooldown. All items with the same cooldown group will be on cooldown. The cooldown group is a namespaced ID and the default value of this field is the namespaced ID of the item being used. Another new component is the repairable component. This component marks that a damageable item can be repaired, and the items field is an item ID, list of item IDs or hashtag item tag describing which items are used to repair it. The enchantable component marks that an item can be enchanted in an enchanting table. An item both needs this component and for some enchantments to be applicable to show up in the enchantment table. The format is a value field that is a positive integer. Higher values allow higher cost enchantments to be picked. 
The equipable component specifies that an item can be equipped in an armor slot. The slot field specifies which equipment slot the item can be equipped in. Equip sound is a sound event that plays when the item is equipped, or the default sound plays if none is specified. Model specifies the armor model to use. This is a namespaced ID of an equipment model, which is a new type of model definition now available in resource packs. More on that later. If no model is specified, the item won't render, unless it is on the head slot, where it will render as itself. Camera overlay can be set to a namespaced ID that points out an overlay texture that is displayed over the camera view when that item is correctly equipped. The ID is the path of the texture relative to the texture's asset folder and without the PNG suffix. Allowed entities is an entity type ID, list of entity type IDs, or entity type tag specifying which entity types can equip the item. Swappable, with a default value of true, determines if the item can be equipped by right-clicking with it selected on the hotbar. And damage on hurt determines if it takes damage when the wearer is hurt. The default value here is also true. And finally, dispensable specifies whether the item can be equipped using a dispenser, which defaults to true if not specified. The next new item component type is the glider component. It has no data fields, it only matters whether the component is present or not. When present, it lets an entity with the item equipped glide, like with Elytra. When the death protection component is present on an item being held, it prevents the holder from dying by restoring a single health point. It has a death effects field, which is an optional list of effects that are applied when the item protects the holder, which are the same type of effects as the consume effects for the consumable component. The tooltip style component controls the rendering of the item's tooltip. A tooltip style is a namespaced ID which resolves to two textures that can be provided by a resource pack, one for the background and one for the frame. And our final new item component is the item model component. This is present on all items and specifies the way it looks. Its format is also a namespaced ID which references a model file, potentially one from a resource pack. Some other components have changed in this version as well. The item name component is now present on all items by default. The item name and custom name components no longer override the name of a written book. Custom potion contents now have a custom name property, which can be used to give potion items a custom name that can't be changed in an anvil, which offsets the fact that the item name component is now always the bottom priority. The fire resistant component has been renamed to damage resistant and given a new field, types, which is a hash prefixed damage type tag. This component prevents that type of damage from destroying the item in entity form, as well as preventing that type of damage from incurring durability damage when equipped. Armor items now have the repairable component by default, and the default attribute modifiers of armor can now be removed by removing the attribute modifiers component. There's a new recipe type called Crafting Transmute, which takes an input item and a reagent, transmuting the input item to another item type, but keeping all the components of the original item. The fields are the same category and group fields as in other recipe types. An input field for the item type to transmute, a material field for the type of the reagent, as well as a result field for the item type to transmute to. This now completely replaces the crafting special shulker box coloring recipe type, which has been removed. The format used for ingredients in recipes is now more similar to how items are represented in other files. This means an ingredient is an item ID, list of item IDs or hashtag item tag like elsewhere instead of objects with either item or tag fields. The fields in smithing trim and smithing transform recipes that would previously accept empty lists as representations of no ingredients are now instead optional. In addition, the special recipe type for suspicious stew has been removed and the vanilla suspicious stew recipes replaced with shapeless recipes. Instruments. That is a new registry folder for goat horn instruments. Each instrument has a sound event field describing the sound that the instrument plays. As usual with sound events, keep in mind that custom sounds need a special format. The range field is the maximum range in blocks at which the instrument can be heard. The use duration is the amount of time in seconds the instrument is considered to be in use after triggering, which also doubles as its cooldown. 
and description is a text component with the description of the instrument as it appears in a tooltip. As usual with data-driven registries, this data is experimental and needs a full world reload to take effect. There's now a trial spawner registry that can be overridden in data packs. It contains all the configurations for trial spawners, which makes it much easier to override all the variants of trial spawners at once without having to locate the blocks in the world. You can still put this data inline directly in trial spawners as well if you want to have a custom spawner. The data for painting variants has changed in this version. There are new optional fields for author and title, which replaces the previous mechanism of those translation keys being derived from the ID of the painting. Both fields are text components. In attribute news, attributes no longer have prefixes for which entity types use them, like generic dot, player dot, and zombie dot. In addition, a number of fixes have been made to the follow range attribute not working for some mob types, only working for horizontal distances, and also impacting mobs' random wandering distance. A new range attribute called Tempt Range has been added for the distance at which temptable mobs can be tempted. Let's talk about loot tables. The special empty loot table has been removed. Where it was previously used, not specifying a loot table at all does the same thing. The sheep loot tables have been changed, so any sheep killed now uses the entity slash sheep loot table. This in turn delegates to the die variant tables based on conditions. A number of new loot tables have been added in this version for shearing many different mobs. Shearing sheep is controlled by a shearing sheep loot table, which delegates to the die color ones found under shearing sheep followed by the die name of the color. Shearing mushrooms now hits a loot table called shearing mushroom, which delegates to the variant ones under shearing mushroom followed by the variant name. And snow golem sharing is now shearing snow golem. Chickens laying eggs is now a new loot table under the gameplay folder named chicken lay. Similarly, armadillos randomly shedding scutes is now controlled by the loot table armadillo shed. And there are two new loot tables for hero of the village gifts. For baby gift and unemployed gift. The tool information is now available to several additional loot table types. That is archaeology with the tool representing the used brush, shearing loot tables with the tool representing the shears, and vault loot tables with the tool representing the key, which is not available when the loot is being evaluated for the block's display. In advancement news, the killed by crossbow trigger has been generalized to killed by arrow. It now has a new optional item predicate field used to match the weapon that fired the arrow called fired from weapon. The using item trigger now stops triggering properly when a player teleports to another dimension. This version also comes with new predicates. Let's start with the input predicate. It is a new sub predicate in the player predicate which can be used to match a number of keybinds used for player movement in the forward, backward, left, right, jump, sneak and sprint fields. All of them are optional booleans and if present they specify whether the predicate should match the key being pressed with true or not being pressed with false. This predicate matches the input of the player pressing the buttons, not the movement of the player and so will detect the input even if the player is in a vehicle they do not control. There's a new sheep entity sub predicate as well. It has available checks for sheared, a boolean, and color for the wool dye color. Salmon have a new entity sub predicate as well. It has a single field for matching the variant, small, medium or large. And a predicate fix. The movement predicate now gives the right result for stationary players the first second, even if they don't move their mouse. Enchantment effect news. The damage item enchantment effect component has been renamed to change item damage and now also supports negative amounts, which means it can be used to heal items instead of damaging them. There's now support for the projectile spawned effect in snowballs, tridents, small fireballs, thrown potions, ender pearls, firework rockets, wind charges, eggs, and for the bobber of a fishing rod. A bug has also been fixed with projectile spawned effects running before all the projectile entity data had been set. Some fixes for attribute effects as well, where attribute effects did not stack properly when used inside location-based effect triggers, and attributes no longer remain if an item is destroyed by a change item damage effect. The teleport command now always dismounts from any vehicle before teleporting. This fixes some desync issues with teleporting away from your vehicle, but also makes it impossible to rotate a rider using a teleport command. 
enter the rotate command. It takes an entity as its first argument and then a number of different parameters, which the key knight of you may have spotted is exactly the same as the rotation parameters for the teleport command, so any rotation can now be ported over to the rotate command. One difference to note is that the rotate command acts on a single entity rather than multiple. And writing temporary entities that don't get saved like lightning bolts, fishing bobbers and leash knots is no longer allowed with the ride command. Having an invalid selector pattern in a text component now causes a command to fail to parse instead of silently resolving to an empty string. The schedule command now fails with an error message if used with a macro function instead of silently doing nothing. And the scheduled functions now have their own section in performance reports instead of being counted to the weather section. And a change to the loot command as well. It will now error when used on a block that cannot have a loot table, like air. Giving absurdly large amount of damage using the damage command no longer breaks the internal data of absorption and health for an entity. Teleporting entities from force loaded chunks no longer makes them fail to render. The command feedback for the set idle timeout command now properly reflects the function of setting the value to zero. And command blocks pick blocked out of the world now properly activate when placed down next to active redstone. In data news, when a mob converts into a new mob type for any reason, most entity data is now kept. This includes no AI, tags, and the team assignment, but notably not UUID. And scoreboard values are also not moved to the new mob. There's a complete list of all the fields to carry over on screen. As a special case, mobs that split into multiple mobs also carry these fields over with an additional list of exceptions and a new set of fields are intentionally never transferred. Each variant of boat now has its own entity type, instead of the boat entity having a type field. This also means the boat entity subpredicate no longer exists. TNT and TNT minecart entities now have an optional field called explosion power, which determines the power of the explosion just like you could already do for creepers. The default value is 4, and for TNT minecarts this power is added to the explosion power calculated from the speed of impact. The lock field container data has been lowercased and turned into an item predicate instead of a string matching the name of the item. This means you can now test for anything an item predicate can test for when locking chests. And in particular, you can match the custom data component to make locks that can't be spoofed by renaming an item. This change in format also applies exactly the same way for the lock item component. The name tags and passenger positions of interaction entities are now in the right place. Display entities now interpolate correctly when rotating over the full rotation boundary between 179 and 180 degrees. Villagers can now have their can pick up loot tag set to zero to disable them picking up items from the ground. And the X rotation of entities is now clamped between negative 90 and positive 90 degrees, so heads cannot roll. In tag news, the villager picks up item tag has been added controlling which items a villager will try to pick up from the ground. The furnace minecart fuel item tag controls which items can be used to fuel a furnace minecart, brewing fuel for items that can be used to fuel a brewing stand. And a set of new tags has been added controlling the item types used for crafting tiered tools, which also controls what items can be used to repair items on that tier. There are new item tags for which items can be used to repair different tiers of armor. There's also a new piglin safe armor tag for items that can be worn to prevent piglin aggro. Duplicates lace for items that can be given to a dancing lay to duplicate it. Panda eats from ground for items that pandas will pick up from the ground and eat. The map invisible equipment item tag controls which items remove your icon from maps. Gaze disguise equipment for any equipment that blocks your vision as far as endermen and creaking are concerned when equipped on your head slot. And a new block tag called bats spawnable on for which blocks a bat can spawn on. And there's a new damage type tag, mace smash. It contains the damage type, Mace Smash. Speaking of damage types, there are two new ones, Mace Smash and Ender Pearl. The format of color fields in particle definitions have been unified, so it is now possible to always use either integer or float component form to define the color. Two new particles have been added in this version, Trail, which takes new arguments for a target position and a color and block crumble, which takes block parameters, which means it needs the same type of arguments as the falling dust particle type, for instance. 
There's a new game rule called Disable Player Movement Check. It is turned off by default and turning it on disables the player movement speed restrictions, the same way that the Disable Elytra Movement Check game rule does, but without the restriction that the player needs to be flying. And another new game rule only exists in worlds with the Minecart Experiments feature flag turned on. Minecart Max Speed. This changes the maximum speed of minecarts from the default of 8 blocks per second, which matches the previous max speed of minecarts, up to a maximum of 1000 blocks per second. Let's wrap up this pack version with the changes to custom world generation formats. A bug has been fixed with the sea level being hardcoded to 63 in some places, which affected both various mobs spawning, some legacy structure placements and biome temperature adjustments. The carver types have been removed. This means the carvers field in biomes now directly lists carvers instead of listing them per carver type, of which only air was previously used. The carving mask placement modifier has also been removed. Geode features no longer ignore the invalid blocks field, and Zoglins now properly use the regular monster spawning requirements when set to spawn naturally in a biome. There are two new tree decorators in this version. Pale Moss has three different fields describing the decoration probability for leaves, trunk, and ground. And the Creaking Heart decorator simply has a probability field. Let's move on to the resource pack news and the two custom equipment models. These changes also mean that the textures for equipment models have been moved and renamed. The appearance of equipment when equipped by players or certain mobs can now be customized using equipment models, which are definition files under the models slash equipment folder and are referenced by the new equipable component. The format of the file is a single layers field, which is a mapping of different possible equipment layer types to lists of layer definitions. Each such layer can have a texture field, which contains the namespaced ID of the texture for this layer. The diable field is an object that specifies that the layer is tinted when the item is diable. That is, it is in the diable item tag. The color when I'm dyed field specifies the tint for an undyed item. Otherwise, the color is used from the dyed item component. If the item is undyed and the color when undyed field is missing, the layer will instead be hidden. And the use player texture field is a boolean with a default value of false. Setting it to true means the layer's texture should be overridden by the player's skin texture, which is only available for wing layers. All equipable items with an equipment model now also support having trims, based on the trim item component. To facilitate this, trim textures have also been moved. In news about block and item definitions, all item models can now use the broken property in model overrides. This was previously only available for Elytra. There's now an optional light emission field on block model elements, which is an integer value between 0 and 15. If this value is set to non-zero, that block element will be rendered as if it was always lit with at least that level. Texture mapping has been updated for the dragon egg, tropical fish fin overlays, arrows and bee stingers. This version also changes the models and UV mapping of the torch and blocks containing redstone torches. There are lots of new dyed bundle icons added, as well as new block states models and textures for the new winter drop experiment, and a new trail particle texture. This pack version also comes with updates for the bundle UI textures as well as the bundle icon model and textures. We got new sprites for customizing more UI functionality. They are a set of sprites for the highlighted slot of an inventory consisting of a foreground and a background sprite, and another set of foreground and background sprites for the highlighted item in the bundle, with a new sprite under container bundle slot background, which can be used to change the slot background of items in the bundle tooltip. Custom tooltips can now be made by replacing sprite files in a resource pack, or specific custom tooltips can be made to reference in the new tooltip style item component. And there are new UI icon textures for the new air bubble icons. A new property is now available in definition files for 9 slice sprites called stretch inner. This is a new optional boolean which defaults to false. When set to true, the center slice is stretched rather than tiled when this sprite is rendered. Let's talk about shaders. To begin with, a developer's note in the changelog has a caveat about core shaders being unsupported. Quote, we understand that overriding core shaders is used for very cool resource pack features, many of which lack supported alternatives. 
better and supported alternatives to this could be provided in the future. With that said, let's go through the changes. The render type entity glint direct shader has been removed and replaced with render type entity glint, and the render type entity translucent call shader has been removed and replaced with render type item entity translucent call. The program definitions for post processing shaders have been made consistent with core shader definitions. That means the blend field has been removed since it had no use. The attributes field has been removed and instead the position attribute will always be bound. The time uniform has been renamed to game time. Post processing definitions and shaders have been moved to new folders and name has been renamed to program and turned into a namespaced ID. Vertex and fragment shader references in program definitions now use namespaced shader IDs and shader source files are no longer required to be in the shaders slash core folder. Shader programs now have a defines field which allows GLSL define directives to be injected into the shader source. It has a values field which is a map of keys to values and will cause definitions of the form hash define key value. The flags field is a list of strings which will cause definitions of the form hash define flag. Shader imports have changed so the moj underscore import directive now supports namespaced includes with absolute paths. Unnamespaced imports are still considered relative like before. The chunk offset uniform in terrain shaders has been renamed to model offset, and some larger changes have been made to post process effect definitions, with in target and aux target merged into a single inputs list, and targets becoming a map instead of a list where the name field becomes the key in the map. There are also some changes to how the Fabulous Mode Transparency Post Processing and the Outline Processing shaders handle external targets. And finally, there's now a new file controlling obsolete translation keys, which is applied when the game starts, found in the game jar as assets slash minecraft slash lang slash deprecated dot json. Those strings are no longer used by the game and are filtered away or renamed. That means if you have custom content using those strings, you'll need to manually re-add them under different keys. And that's all for this version. Thank you for watching. If you found this useful at all, then please pay your fee of one click at the like button below. My name is Slime, and I'll see you next time.